What's up guys and welcome to today's video where I talk about my golden Facebook ad targeting method. So it's the method that I use pretty much with every product. It doesn't really matter if it's like cheap, expensive, which niche it is. I use it like 95% of the time and so far it has been super effective and I highly believe in this uh, method partly because of the Facebook algorithm and how the whole machine learning uh, capabilities of Facebook have improved. So in this video, I want to uh, show you exactly what I do and why I think it's so powerful. And before we start, just one little reminder that my high ticket life training will take place in around one week. So on Sunday, uh, 7th October, I recommend that you check the link in the description for the training. Uh, there is the link. You can register super easy and quick, and it will be a great thing. So far, we have 300 people signed up already. So make sure that if you want to learn how to sell products for a few hundred dollars, that you check this out. All right. So this being said, let's go back to Facebook. And here we are in a demo, um, in my demo ad account right here. And um, let's say that we are selling a product, for example, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with something like a fishing niche, right? Let's, let's go with something like a fishing niche. And by the way, I've used the um, conversion objective. So I pretty much always start with the conversion objective. Normally, it doesn't really matter whether I have data so far or not. I still tend to go with the purchase conversion objective, uh, objective but sometimes I actually go with link click and then with like add to cards and then, then with conversions. But at the moment, it seems that uh, starting with conversions right away actually works pretty well. So let's say we want to advertise in the US. So this is the first thing we do. And then what I do is this, as long as I don't know exactly what my target audience looks like, which is the case in fishing, uh, in the fishing niche, because, you know, we have fishing people from 20 or even 18 or younger, all the way up to probably 70 or more or something like that. And as long as you don't know exactly what your target audience looks like, um, I keep the, the age range as broad as possible. So of course, if you have like, if your target audience are young parents or something, you won't go with people, uh, aged 18 or aged 70 or something. Um, but if you have something like fishing or like general, uh, types of clothing stuff or, or something where it's very hard to give the perfect audience, I recommend that you keep this as broad as possible. And same goes for the gender. As long as you don't have a gender specific product, don't make assumptions here. Like I have so many people, you know, just because they're selling some sort of clothing, they will go with women just because they go with some sort of like gadget or toy related thing or sports or whatever they go with men. This de is definitely not a good idea. My experience is that if you use both, you can then let the data come in and check which of them works better and you can still exclude them, but it's never a good idea to just pick one because you think it might eventually perform better than the other. So we have all, what I do though is, um, let's first of all, change this to the United States. What I uh, do though is that if I wanted to target people in the United States, I always put English as a language because that way I make sure that people who might not speak English very well is, uh, are not uh, included here. So of course there might be people who speak English, but even though they're not matched by this filter here, but I wanna play it safe and I wanna make sure that I only get the most relevant people possible. So then we go to the targeting section and this is where all the magic happens. And this is where I believe many people uh, you know, make pretty big mistakes. So one of the common things that people do is that they segment their niche as much as possible. You know, let's say we go with a fishing example and what these people do is um, they go ahead and they look for all the magazines and they look for all the uh, publications and groups and communities and, and shows and whatever it is. I remember that this was a very common method, something like two years ago, everyone was talking about this, you know, writing a list of communities and, and games and whatever there is in this niche, and then testing all of them, right? And um, I know why people think it makes sense. And it sounds pretty solid at first, because you can find the the interest and the and the fields that drive the highest conversion and the highest action. But the point is, Facebook by now became so dedicated when it comes to machine learning and matching the right people with your offer and stuff like that, that it's actually counterproductive if you um, split it up too much. And if you think that you can outperform and outsmart Facebook by saying something like, oh, I don't want to give you an, an audience of a million people. I want to give you 20 audiences of 50,000 people each. And uh, I want to test this and this and that and that. And the problem here is that you're splitting your money so much that Facebook cannot make 
use of its full power and cannot uh, use its full power because it's always limited to these small audiences. So what I would do here, let's say, as I said, we go with phishing. There are certain things that I normally do. So first, the most obvious one is that I go with a super broad interest. And in this case, it's only phishing and we're still left with 44 million people. Now, this is a little too much even for my strategy. Um, but when I go with phishing and then click on suggestions, I typically get um, I typically get other suggestions that are still very broad, but they're not that crazily uh, uh, broad like the original one. So phishing, yeah, extremely broad. But what if we use like recreational phishing and uh, yeah, now we can check what happens if we delete phishing. Now we are down to, well, at least 9 million. This is an audience that I would generally work with. Of course, if you have a $5 per day budget, probably it makes sense to stick into the like 1 million, 2 million people range. But we can have a look at like phishing rod. We can have a look at phishing reel. There are so many different related um, related interests that all have millions of people in them um, that you can easily pick one of those and still uh, hit, I don't know, something like 4 million people or so. So let's quickly check what phishing rod itself without anything gives us, well, 3.5 million. So this is an audience that I would target, for example. So you get the idea. I start with a very broad interest and then uh, I get a lot of recommendations from Facebook and I pick the ones that leave me with an audience size of at least like 1 million all the way up to like 10 million. This kind of depends on the budget. If we start something with like a hundred, two hundred dollars a day, I have no problem using like 6 million people immediately. But if it's five, 10, $15, probably it's not too useful to start that big. But 3.5 in my case would be totally fine for me. And this is the point guys. If you give Facebook room to optimize itself and to optimize the ads for you, this will definitely help you with your business. And here is where I would put in the energy and the effort. So let's say we stick to this example. I would create one ad set with fishing rod. And then once it's done, I would create another one with, for example, the fishing reel and some other um, uh, categories. The point is, all of them, of course, are highly overlapping, right? So if we target a fishing rod audience, a fishing reel audience, and some others, they are highly overlapping. And um, we know that. So it's not that we want to avoid this by all means. It would be ideal if we can split test these audiences, but I don't like to exclude each other because then there is a lower audience. But then, of course, Facebook, if you have all these audiences, Facebook won't show... Um, you know, won't take like people away from another audience or something like that. So it's still works pretty well for us. And this is the point. If you keep each individual audience big in itself, Facebook has all the, the, the power to find the right people for your business and, you know, match them with your website. And now then what, like I said, where I would invest or where I do uh, invest my time in then is once I've had the, have those different target audiences set up, I go and I, um, you know, focus on the ad creation part. So here, I typically also stick with automatic placements. Well, technically I tend to use like only the Facebook feed and um, the Instagram feed. Sometimes I create also, or uh, sometimes we create um, like images or videos specifically for Instagram so that we have them square. But sometimes we just go with both and see if we can exclude something very, very, uh, very early on. But it kind of depends on where, like how you create your visuals, um, whether you can always create two separate ones but these are the typical um, placements I go with. Like I said, sometimes it's even Facebook feed only, but I go with mobile and desktop at the same time. So by now I don't really optimize my, um, my, uh, my creative to just one of those. So I go with all devices and you see my whole strategy here is super broad. Like I'm not uh, niching down my devices. I'm not niching down my play. Uh, well, I niche down my placements, but I'm not niching down my device type, my audience itself, etc. What I do though, is I, Tick the only connected one to Wi-Fi box if I use video ads, because I know many people by now have like super uh, big, um, uh, you know, phone plans where they where they get a lot of internet uh, bandwidth on their phones. But the reality is, including myself, uh, a lot of people, including myself, still have a really bad plan. And because of these people, I tick the only one connected to Wi-Fi um, uh, box. As long as it's a video for pictures, I um, normally don't do that. So this is how I, how I come up with the audience. It's super uh, basic and broad, but I split test them against others. So I make sure that I find a big audience that is giving me the best results. 
And uh, then in the next step, I really go ahead and do extensive ad testing. So it's not unusual that we have like five to sometimes even 10 ads in one ad set. Now, of course, again, this depends on your budget with a $5 per day budget. Don't create 10 ads. It's just too thin. But if you have, for example, like a 50 or $100 budget, you can definitely create five to 10 ads and see which one is getting the best results. Because from my experience, it's making a bigger difference if you have an amazing ad that is catching the attention than it is to go super, super detailed with your audience and think that now you've cracked the code, but in reality, you know, your audience would have been in another audience anyway. And here's the thing, only if you know a lot, a lot, a lot about your audience, you should go super in depth. So this is the key takeaway here. Keep it broad if you are just somewhat experienced in, in, in your field and only a snitch down if, first of all, you have a really, really targeted product where you know that there are just like 20,000 people in the world or in your country that could buy it or would buy it anyway, um, or because you know exactly who you're talking to and who you need to talk to. But in, in any other situation, you know, if you were just targeting like the fitness market and you think, yeah, well, I'm targeting a random uh, fitness product and I don't know exactly what happens in this market, keep it broad, keep it uh, general, and then split test broad audiences against each other and put a focus on your ads. This is exactly what we do. This is what we do since, I don't know, over a year now for sure. Um, and uh, probably even two years. But in the beginning, I also used that very specific uh, method, but now we definitely adapted this and use it almost all the time. And yeah, guys, this is pretty much what I do with targeting. I assume that because of the title, you thought I have some super secret hack that is uh, very detailed and I'm testing a hundred different uh, audiences and have a secret little, little method back there. But in my opinion, the Facebook your Facebook success doesn't stand and fall with the targeting as long as you keep uh, it related to your key audience. So I hope this video was helpful. Nonetheless, I hope my explanation was helpful because I know I talked a lot without, you know, doing too much stuff right here, but I think it's important to know exactly like why it works so well, why the Facebook algorithm does this so well, because they match the right people and they know who is more relevant to your business. And um, yeah, I hope that you like this video. As I said, please check out the high life, uh, high ticket training that we do on Sunday. As I said, 300 people are there already. Would be great if you are as well, because I will show you how um, to sell hyper expensive products with really high margins. So this being said, guys, really uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more. And I will see you in the next video tomorrow. And all the best with your business. Bye-bye.